Hi everyone, I'm Virginia Tishner, Festival Director for West Coast Ragtime Festival. For those of you joining us, we're about to present our second program for today, Saturday. I want to thank all of you again for tuning in to this year's West Coast Ragtime Festival. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Drabon from the West Coast Ragtime Festival Board. We are dedicated to the promotion and preservation of ragtime and vintage American music. This 35th annual festival is brought to you by the West Coast Ragtime Society and supported by donations from listeners like you. Please feel free to show your appreciation to these fine musicians through your donations. Thank you. Here's how you can support the musicians featured in the 2021 West Coast Ragtime Festival. As a nonprofit tax exempt 501c3 corporation, we welcome your donations, which will support the musicians featured all weekend. There are three ways you can donate to the West Coast Festival Ragtime Society. First, you can donate through PayPal. You can get there through the West Coast Ragtime website membership donation page or by going directly to PayPal and putting West Coast Ragtime in the send. You can also make a donation by credit card over the phone. Please call 415-891-3096 to donate using a credit card. Our festival staff will be available throughout the festival weekend, during the broadcast, in between our live broadcasts, and one hour after our live broadcasts to accept your donations over the phone. That's Friday, November 19th from 3 to 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, November 20th and 21st from noon to 9 Pacific Standard Time. And finally, you can make a donation by mailing a check to the West Coast Ragtime Society P.O. Box 13346, Sacramento, California, 95813. And once again, thank you so much for your support. For those of you joining for the first time, we're starting momentarily with the second concert for today of our online festival, the Saturday Afternoon Concert, broadcasting on Saturday, November 20th, 2021. Sit back and enjoy these amazing performers. Along with a great lineup of performers, we are delighted to present our Master of Ceremonies for this show, Matt Tolentino. Take it away, Matt. gentlemen, my name is Matt Tolentino and it gives me great pleasure to be your MC here for the Saturday afternoon concert at the West Coast Ragtime Festival. Want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support last night, our Friday concert, and of course you're going to love Saturday's offerings as well. We have four wonderful artists, actually five if you think about it. I'll get to that in a little bit. But first off, I do want to give a hearty thank you and a big shout out to Virginia Tishner for keeping all of this running. And of course, our technical wizards, including but not limited to Andrew Green and TJ Moeller being such wizards at the computer to put this thing on so that we could have a wonderful festival uninterrupted, even if it means it's from the comfort of your own living room. So like I said, let's get right to it. We have two wonderful artists, a dynamic duo coming for you right off the bat. We have Frederick Hodges and Richard Dowling. They're in New York, Queens actually, because they'll take you to the Steinway Piano Factory. They'll take you to a wonderful little sidewalk cafe, and they'll take you for a wonderful tour of those rolling, magnificent cornfields of New York. It sounds crazy, but it all makes perfect sense. I'll let them explain it. Here it is, Richard Dowling and Frederick Hodges. Greetings, I am Frederick Hodges. And I am Richard Dowling. 
we are delighted to have this opportunity to play a set of our two piano arrangements for you. We recorded our set at the historic Steinway factory in Queens, New York. We were very fortunate to be given access to the private concert grand showroom on the third floor of the factory. We were surrounded by some of the most beautiful pianos on earth. Because our program was recorded in a busy working piano factory, you may occasionally hear the sounds of the Steinway craftsmen on the floor above us building pianos. We hope that you will be as amused and amazed as we were by this auditory evidence of the creation of fine musical instruments. Our first selection is the hit song, Oh Me, Oh My, from the 1921 Broadway show, Two Little Girls in Blue. The music is by Vincent Humans, and the lyrics are by Ira Gershwin, who at this time was writing under the pseudonym of Arthur Francis. In the teens and twenties of the last century, 
the musical world was swept up with a craze for oriental foxtrots. In 1920, the most famous and popular such piece was The Vamp, from the pen of composer Byron Gay. I peppered my two piano arrangement of The Vamp with musical quotations from famous 19th century operas about legendary vamps. I hope you have lots of fun solving this musical puzzle and can identify not only the operas, but also the name of each vamp. To make things extra challenging for you, however, this puzzle does contain a trick question in that one of these vamps is not, in fact, from an opera, but from another sort of musical work. Enjoy.
Now we would like to play for you a delightful piano novelty from 1933 called Holiday. This was written by the pianist and singer Ethel Ponce, who was part of the famous 1920s and 30s singing duo of the Ponce Sisters. Their father was none other than Phil Ponce, who was a respected composer, publisher, and music executive, in addition to being the manager of Fats Waller. We will be playing the two piano arrangement prepared by the great Italian-born composer and arranger and conductor, Domenico Savino, who was one of the towering figures of American music during the first half of the 20th century.
our penultimate number, we would like to play for you Frederick's two piano arrangement of the song. Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, um, oh yeah, If I Only Had a Brain, which as everyone knows is from the 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz. The music was composed by Harold Arlen, the lyrics by Yip Harburg, and the song was introduced in the film by the wonderful dancer Ray Bulger. This arrangement also includes a musical quotation meant to represent Toto as he watches the Scarecrow perform his astonishing dance in the cornfield. I wonder if any of you can identify the quote. <laughs>
our final number, we would like to play for your enjoyment my two piano concert arrangement of Ding, <laughs> ding Dong, The Witch is Dead. <laughs> this song is also from The Wizard of Oz. But before we continue our musical journey down the yellow brick road, we would like to thank you for your kind attention. We would like to thank the festival for inviting us to participate again this year. And we are delighted to have had this opportunity to share our passion for musical mischief with you. Now, please enjoy. Ding, ding, ding dong, the, the witch, witch is, is dead. dead. anymore. Couldn't resist. There we are, the dynamic duo of Richard Dowling and Frederick Hodges. Well, our next performer makes our festival an international festival. That's right, coming to us from Japan, we have Takashi Hamada. Yes, indeed, wonderful ragtime guitar. 
It's always a treat for me to hear ragtime played in music other than the piano, which is, of course, the wellspring. But, of course, let's not forget that ragtime music was found for bands, orchestras, mandolins, banjos, and, of course, guitar. All of those were published by Stark and all those other arranging companies way back when. So, and of course, as an accordion player, I'm always looking for the rags that best suit my instrument. Well, I think he's found some ones that really suit the guitar, including some real classic rags. So here we go. Let's not delay. All the way from Japan, Takashi Hamada. Hello, my name is Takashi Hamada, Japanese guitarist. It is very honor for me to participate in such a great and historical event. I love ragtime music very much. Sorry for my bad English speaking, but I will play ragtime guitar. Swipeshi Cakewalk, Scott Joplin, uh, by Scott Joplin and Arthur Marshall. <laughs> Next tune is called Roberto Clemente. It is composed by David Thomas Robert, my most favorite artist. <laughs>
Tuning is a bit strange. Uh, it is capable, but uh, open string uh, E flat, A flat, C, F, C, E flat. Uh, very strange tuning. Uh, anyway, I play Mabel's Dream.
this tune is called Savoya Lab. It is my original guitar ragtime.
Thank you, Takashi. And thank you for making our West Coast Ragtime Festival the International West Coast Ragtime Festival. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you showing us just how good ragtime sounds on instruments other than the piano. That's right. In the old days, you could buy published arrangements for guitar, mandolin, banjo, as well as piano scores, that's right, but also for full orchestra and full band. They had these wonderful things called stock arrangements. And this is actually, Mohammed, this is actually a submission in the Oriental Foxtrot category, which comes a little bit after ragtime. Perhaps you could say the very first next big musical thing after ragtime. They were popular in the late teens and early 1920s, and this one comes to us from, oh, uh, 1920, how about that? So you see, in the old days, you could go and you could buy these published arrangements. They had clarinet parts, flute parts, violin parts, bass parts, drum parts, everything you could think of. And that way, no one in your band had to sit down and do the hard work. If you had 50 cents or 75 cents, you could go down the street and buy an arrangement for your band and play it. And that was the church in them. And that tradition continues today. In the United States, we have such wonderful bands like Andrew Green's Petrine Ragtime Society Orchestra, as well as the old standby, the Paragon Ragtime Orchestra, and the real old guard, the New Leviathan Oriental Foxtrot Orchestra. So, and of course, in Europe, you have wonderful bands like the Ophelia Ragtime Orchestra, which we're going to hear from at the conclusion of today's Saturday afternoon concert. And we're even going to be treated to their ambitious leader and pianist, Morton, who's going to tell you all about that. And a real treat, we have the great Max Morath himself will emcee that concert. So you want to hear that? That's, that's worth the price of admission alone right there. So anyway, uh, Max Morath, if it's a name you're not familiar with, well, in ragtime, he needs no introduction. But outside of that, perhaps you're new to ragtime or you're more of a jazz guy, Max Morath worked tirelessly to preserve this music and a good 10 or 15 years ahead of the curve. We all know ragtime had its revival in the 1970s thanks to the, mo the movie The Sting. Well, Max was working hard on films and Broadway things. He was doing television appearances. He was writing books. He was doing all this in the 1960s, way ahead of his time, and definitely ahead of the ragtime revival that we, thank God, that we love so much. So Max is going to be narrating and emceeing that wonderful show, so you want to be sure you stick around to the end of the concert and hear that. And of course, coming up next, our, our next performer, my good friend Martin Spitznagel from the city of Bridges, the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He has a very cool message coming up right now all about what he has coming up for you. Hello, West Coast. Martin Spitznagel here. Good to see you. I have the pleasure now of introducing a composition in honor of Max Morath. Max recently turned 95 years young on October 1st of this year, and his friends wanted to honor him with a ragtime composition. Uh, and so they organized an international composition competition and got entries from all over the place. Uh, and uh, the competition only had two rules. The first rule is the title had to be to the max, super cute. And the second rule was that the piece had to be in the style of a classic rag. And so Max received these entries and without knowing who was who, listened to them all and picked the one uh, that he thought was the, the top of the heap there. And it just so happened to be my piece was the one that won. So I'm so excited about that and uh, to get to honor Max in this way. Max has uh, been an incredible influence on me and on everybody who tickles the ivories in this ragtime style. He's a big deal to our community and to get to honor him in this way was really wonderful. So now, without further ado, here is the winning composition in honor of Max Morath to the max.
I'll be back. Here's how you can help support the musicians featured in this year's online West Coast Ragtime Festival. After West Coast Ragtime Society recovers the production costs of this year's festival, the remaining donations received will support the musicians featured all weekend. There are three ways for you to donate to West Coast Ragtime Society. First, you can donate to us using PayPal. You can get there from the West Coast Ragtime Festival donation page displayed here. Or by going to the festival's page on PayPal. You can also make a donation to us by credit card. Please call 415-891-3096 to donate using a credit card. Our festival staff is available throughout the weekend, during our live broadcasts, in between our broadcasts, and one hour after our live broadcasts to accept credit card donations over the phone. That's Friday, November 19th, 3 to 9 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, the 20th and 21st, noon to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Lastly, you can also mail us a donation by check at the address displayed here, West Coast Ragtime Society, P.O. Box 13346, Sacramento, California, 95813. All this information is also available on the Facebook and YouTube page for each concert. We greatly appreciate all your support. Thank you, Martin, for that amazing piece. It's no small wonder that you won that competition because, as always, you've aced that classic ragtime style. And we appreciate it. And we appreciate your sharing your wonderful gift of songwriting and performing with all of us here at West Coast. I can't wait to the day when I can see and hear you again. And, hey, as for all you fine folks at home, can't wait to see you, too. That's right. When I crack the jokes here and there's no one to laugh, that's... Ah, it's not the same as nobody laughing at my jokes in person. But anyway, I digress. Let's move on to our final performer, or shall I say, performers. That's right, we have a ragtime band for you. A good one, too. All the way from Oslo, Norway, we have the Ophelia Ragtime Orchestra. A, a, a great high-energy unit that you're going to absolutely love. And even better, we have their fearless leader and pianist, Morten Gunnar Larsen. He's going to tell you all about it. He's going to tell you how he started the band way back in 1977. And thanks to an influential guest at one of their early concerts, they decided to keep going. And as if that's not enough, like I said, we have the great Max Morath coming up within the, within the concert to MC this great show for you. So stick around, sit back, relax, grab your favorite beverage, and enjoy our concluding performers, the Ophelia Ragtime Orchestra from Oslo, Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mr. Morten Gunnar Larsen from Oslo, Norway. I'm very pleased to once again be able to participate in the online West Coast Ragtime Festival. But this time, mainly as a member, a pianist and leader of the Ophelia Orchestra. I guess it's been about 10 years ago since the last time we were able to play in California and I hope especially that you would like to enjoy seeing us play here in Oslo. Uh, this recording was made uh, in 2017 when we had our 40th anniversary concert. The band was started in 1977 and we played our first gigs in a small jazz club here in Oslo called the New Orleans Workshop. Later in 77, the great Yubi Blake visited Oslo to play a concert in another club. And we were asked to play after him and of course we had practiced a lot of Yubi Blake's compositions and he stayed almost until 1 a.m to hear us play. And this was of course very inspiring and it made one of the things that really made me want to continue keeping this band going. And um, over the years we played a lot of different concerts here and um, finally we were able to celebrate 40 years. This, the recording you're going to see was made in a beautiful concert hall in Oslo. I guess in English you would call it the old Masonic Hall. Beautiful building made in the 1850s. 
and uh, it used to be a lot of classical artists who appeared there. For instance, uh, the, the Norwegian composer Edward Grieg used to perform there. But also in the 1930s, it became a jazz venue. And here you could hear concerts by, for instance, Fats Waller and Louis Armstrong in the couple of years before the Second World War started. Of course then, everything changed and no jazz was allowed to be heard in Norway for five years. And uh, for many years after that, this hall was closed to the public, but then was renovated in the late 1980s. And now has an incredible, beautiful atmosphere and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy seeing and hearing us perform here in Oslo in the old Masonic Hall. This anniversary concert opens with James Scott's Ophelia Rag, an obvious choice because it is also the name of the orchestra. This orchestral version of the Ophelia Rag reflects the challenging piano style of James Scott, with Morton Gunner Larson leading the way. This is James Scott's Ophelia Rag from 1910. You can understand why this concert was selected to be featured this year as part of the West Coast Ragtime Festival. From the musical selections, to the orchestrations, to the performance itself, this concert is quite frankly perfect. For years, Fred Stone was at the center of the Detroit musical community. 
Many of the younger players of that city were helped and influenced by Fred Stone. This is his 1903 composition, Bell of the Philippines. Turpin was a hard-hitting pianist and composer from St. Louis who left us only a few published works. His Nightmare Rag is in fact a delightful daytime excursion into ragtime. It opens with an exciting drum solo, so hang on to your hats. Here is Tom Turpin's Ragtime Nightmare.
bunch of blues by a couple of piano players I had never heard of, Mr. Wire and Mr. Kelly. It is indeed a blues in this 12 major blues format with ragtime syncopations laid on. This has to be one of the earliest examples of the blues form. By the way, Morton was given a copy of this music by Bill Muscle of New Orleans with the information that Paul Wire had been a violinist with W.C. Handy's orchestra. From 1915, here's A Bunch of Blues, aptly entitled A Bunch of Blues.
That international rag was composed by Irving Berlin in 1913. He claimed he wrote it the night before its debut when he needed a new opening number for his act while he was on tour in England. As one critic said, it wasn't ragtime, but it was authentic Americana, and it did the trick. give a dollar for a dime. That was probably the first collaboration of Yubi Blake and Andy Rizalf. We would like to think the dime was to operate a jukebox, but it was probably for a coin-operated player piano. It pictures a couple on the verge of love. A dollar for a dime, believed to be in the show Tan Manhattan in 1940. Let's hear it. Magic. 
The Junk Man Rag was composed by Lucky Roberts in 1914. He was considered one of the leading pianists of Harlem and began publishing his original rags about 1910. He toured France and the UK with James Reese Europe during World War I. This is his Junk Man Rag. Oh, 
The dance is about to give you puts a lot of ginger in your jump and the rag. We'll make a picture of sway and swag. Cause it's a daddy and every rag can pay. Go couple hug like a bear and won't dump up. When old Pete starts playing the drag so sweet. Everybody is on their feet. The turkey twellers climb, slide up of the park is high to that melody that slowed it down with the harmony. Believe me, I'm wild about that job. Souvenir of Havana. Its composer was obviously not a well-known name on Tin Pan Alley. Louis Moro Gottschalk was born in 1829 and died at age 40 in Rio de Janeiro. He was best known as a virtuoso performer of his own romantic piano works. And enjoy here the featured violin.
Here is another Gottschalk composition, Manchega. It was obviously influenced by the composer's time spent in South America. Listen here for hints of the tango and the rumba. From 1853, here is Manchega. We are coming to the close of this remarkable concert. Hats off to Morton Gunnar Larson and the orchestra, and to Virginia Titchener and the West Coast Ragtime Festival. To conclude the concert, the spotlight is on David Thomas Roberts, considered by many to be the leading contemporary ragtime composer. The Ophelia Orchestra of Oslo concludes with Impressions of Helen by David Thomas Roberts.
mighty swell. I told you, high energy right out of the gate, huh? Not too bad. That's the Ophelia Ragtime Orchestra all the way from Oslo, Norway. Also, wonderful guys to help make our West Coast Ragtime Festival the International West Coast Ragtime Festival. And pretty neat to hear from Morton himself to tell you about his band. And you be Blake, how about that? I would have been inspired too. So anyway, with that, our Saturday afternoon concert has concluded, but, 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 we have a great Saturday evening concert for you coming up in no time flat, so make sure you come back for that. And if you would like to help keep Great Classic Ragtime Festival moving ahead into the future, and if you would like to contribute, well, Virginia is coming up with a word from our sponsor about how you can help keep ragtime music going forward into the future. So thanks for sticking around, watching our Saturday afternoon show. Stretch your legs, grab a little something to eat, and we'll see you tonight at our Saturday evening concert. I'm Matt Tolentino. Thank you, and goodbye. Wow, that was amazing. We are so thrilled to be able to bring you these amazing performers from all around the world. The great performers presented in this year's online version of the West Coast Ragtime Festival are being compensated solely by donations from viewers like you. After recovering the production costs of this year's festival, the remaining donations received during the weekend will go to the musicians. There are three ways for you to donate to West Coast Ragtime Society. First, you can donate to us using PayPal. You can get there from the West Coast Ragtime Festival donation page displayed here, or by going to the festival's page on PayPal. You can also make a donation to us by credit card. Please call 415-891-3096 to donate using a credit card. Our festival staff is available throughout the weekend, during our live broadcasts, in between our broadcasts, and one hour after our live broadcasts to accept credit card donations over the phone. That's Friday, November 19th, 3 to 9 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, the 20th and 21st, noon to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Lastly, you can also mail us a donation by check at the address displayed here, West Coast Ragtime Society, P.O. Box 13346, Sacramento, California, 95813. All this information is also available on the Facebook and YouTube page for each concert. We greatly appreciate all your support. Let's all take a 90 minute break. We'll be back soon for the Saturday evening special show, Ragtime 1901, where every piece in this show is from 1901, emceed by Sean Sharp.